Hello, good morning, Malaysia. Oh, I sound, I sound like a radio host now. Anyway, uh, good morning, guys. Welcome back to our trainer talk. It has been such a long time. I think probably a month already. All right. And um, it's good to be back. Today uh, on our show, we have uh, Bradley. And um, Bradley is also one of my friends uh, from back in the days. And this guy, actually, he... Uh, He's a psychology major, right? Which is very interesting. So he's something somewhat like Sebastian. Uh, so we can tap into that probably later. And but what's more interesting is this guy has has done an amazing feat uh, uh, a couple of years ago, where he wanted to show um, basically I think the concept of 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 energy balance, right? So what he did was he um, ate nasi lemak for every day for one hundred and fifteen days. Uh, to prove that you know you still can lose weight eating what you love and and his uh go-to motto is um he doesn't only teach clients how to lift but he also teaches clients how to live all right so i think um we can have bradley now on the show so let's welcome him to the show bradley hey. good morning good morning thanks for the introduction man sorry hey first time i'm hearing me that way yeah really yeah huh? sound Feels like a superstar. Potential radio DJ uh, in you, bro. Oh. oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I would like some uh, career options, you know. <laughs> okay, bro, so I think you can do a better job than me. So why don't you uh, let people at home know, you know? Um, as Aaron has graciously introduced me, uh, I'm a personal trainer, psychology major. And I've always been really, very intrigued with not so much how to get help clients get results in the first three months, six months, or nine months, but to help them to design a lifestyle that kind of suits them in the long run. Of course, I think, I mean, it's a very cliche statement, but this fitness journey is a lifelong one rather than a rather than one you just aim for for Chinese New Year or Christmas or Hari Raya, right? So mm-hmm. that has been why that has uh, that's why I've been doing for the past six years, five years since I quit a full time job to do this, and okay. nothing much has changed since. And, and what were you doing before you were a trainer? Uh, I was a psychology major. So once I graduated from there, honestly, I think in Malaysia, it's a little bit hard, or at least for me, maybe my results just suck. It's a bit hard to get a proper <laughs> job, uh, psychology job with a psychology degree. Like. So I went into copywriting, uh, which okay, I, okay, okay. I really enjoyed. But I mm-hmm. think in my nine months as a copywriter, and this is mm-hmm. something that I always shared, um, I spent the first one month watching Game of Thrones. Uh, right. Season one, season one to one to four or one to five. And, and what, I, was, huh? I was in I was in this office and I was in this corner corner lot, right? Where there's no one sitting behind me. Mm-hmm. And there was literally nothing to do. And the instruction uh-huh. from my, my boss was always that hey, uh, just do whatever you want to do. Lah. You can watch a show or whatever it is. And that's because he does the same thing as well. And right. he sometimes sleeps on his desk. So I spent about nine months to a year there. So you were you were not doing copywriting, lah. I was doing copywriting after the second month, but I think okay. with a full time job, at least with copywriting, I spent, I think I easily spent probably an hour or two hours working. The rest of the time, it's just sitting there uh-huh. and waiting for instructions, which was a very huge waste of time. I feel. But hey, bro, I have to say, uh, I think you write pretty good articles, you know. So if you guys want to check out his articles, maybe you can drop drop uh, your 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 website below or something. Uh, okay. Yeah, Bradley, Bradley really writes uh, uh, amazing articles, honestly. I have personally read, I think, almost all of yours. Thanks, so anyway, uh, bef- bef- before we, we, we kickstart the show, I would want to uh, uh, talk a little bit about your 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 115 days of Nasi Lemak Diet, lah, because I think that's... That's an amazing thing. Like I don't know where you got that from. Was it from Matt August or something? <laughs> but uh, that idea, I think, where, where did it come from and why did you want to do it? Like, what were you trying to achieve? It was, I think it was in 2017 or 18. I really can't get the date right. Um, I think it was after Chinese New Year. Okay. And there was a, and even before Chinese New Year, uh, I went on a trip to Australia. And even before that, I had, I had so much going on. Christmas celebration, I had my birthday celebration. And I think in the three months or five months span, I put on about six kgs, which in hindsight is not that bad. Lah. It's basically a very sustained weight gain. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. But I, I knew, and as a trainer, I think you and I, we both know kind of the, the recipes to lose weight, right? 
Yeah. And yeah. I I want so anyway, to be, be, before before you spill the spill the beans, huh? I want to talk yeah. a little bit to people at home. Who of you have uh, gained like five six kilos in the past MCO? Please please let me know in the comment section. Then Bradley is gonna teach you how how to how to shed it off. You know. Yeah, please let me know in the comment section. So, so we're trying to uh, uh, get people to share their their experience as well, right? Okay, bro, you go on. So, then I think just one week after Chinese Year, I decided, okay, like, I want to start, uh, as the fitness industry would put it, I want to start cutting. Uh. Mm -hmm. And when, sorry, my phone just talked to me randomly. And okay, for those who I, don't know what cutting is, cutting is basically a process where you want to shed body fat off your body. Like. Cutting, yep. dieting, weight loss, fat loss. Um, it's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's different jargons we use in the fitness industry. And I thought, I thought might as well, hey, let's just do something fun uh, because I feel like uh, we both know energy balance. We both know calorie restriction. Uh, but it's easier said than done. And most people still look at it as something of a huge buzzword to them, right? So yep. I thought, might yep. as well make it as relatable as I can to maybe some of the people that follow me on social media or my clients. And mm -hmm. I'll attempt eating one nasi a day because at that point also I haven't eaten nasi lemak for a long time. Right. Um, so you go to the the standard Malaysian food, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I attempted it. Uh, my goal was to lose about six kg because I was eighty six kg and I'm comfortable being at eighty kg. But mm -hmm. I, I when I did that uh, challenge, uh, which was basically me having one nasi lemak every day. Uh, and it's keeping within 2,400 or 2,500 calories, if I'm not mistaken, to lose weight. So right. my goal was to lose 6 kg in three months, but I think I lost 5 kg in the first month or something like that. Oh, in the first so month? In the first month, I lost a lot of weight. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you were eating nothing but nasi lemak or just you need to have one per day? Wow, uh, I, need have, I need to have one nasi lemak a day. Okay. And okay. my other meals were pretty much the standard stuff that I eat. Um, mm -hmm, and I mm -hmm. tried to make sure that they were within my calorie intake of 2005. Okay, so your got protein it. Shake, your vegetables, uh, sometimes I eat a little bit healthier, your steamed food and all that. But wow. I still get that one nasi lemak a day. Mm -hmm. Amazing, bro. Amazing. So guys, you have heard it, right? Uh, eat one nasi lemak a day, you can lose five kilos in a month. <laughs> this is a living proof for you. So bro, what, what, what happened after you uh, 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 did that? Huh? Like what kind of response did you get or, or what were you uh, experiencing after that? My, my, the whole purpose of that was just to at least uh, communicate my message in a more, uh, in a way where, where I participate in myself to my mm -hmm. clients. So mm -hmm. some of them were, were, were amazed and they shared with their friends. And uh, I think that philosophy just, or, or at least that piece of blog that I've written that I shared to them, um, made me known as at least for the time being in the short time frame uh, the nasi lemak guy that right. was the kind of response i've gotten um and sometimes i walk I, when i was walking around mall or uh, oh really restaurants i do get that comment as well hey aren't you the guy that did the nasi lemak diet wow so, so it, it went quite that, cool. that, that that big huh but two seconds of, uh, of fame two seconds of fame. <laughs> so what's the next one bro you gotta do some roti chanai uh, or something you know chakui tiao <laughs> I, I, I have no plans. I think I'm right now, at least before this MCO, I was very occupied with work. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. Nothing, maybe nothing, nothing for the time being. Let's see what pops up. Work, I assume you have a lot of uh, clients. Lah. Yes, but right okay. now, uh, as you know, how messed up KL is, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. kind of taking a breather right now. Are you guys still under like a uh, strict, uh, SOPs yes. or, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, like certain gyms can't open and what's what's the what's the scene like in KL right now? Yes and no. I think we are still called, we're still under MCO, RMCO, mm -hmm. but it's much looser than how things were in March. Right. So gyms are still operating? La. Gyms are allowed to operate. Okay, okay. All right, bro. So um, let's let's talk about let's come back to the fitness industry, right? So earlier you were talking about uh, um, a lot of jargons, and uh, you 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 have a different take on the industry compared to the to the rest. So maybe I can ask you what what do you mean by success uh, when it comes to the fitness industry? What is your philosophy? What is your uh, best 
uh, way to describe success? Um, I assume, are we talking to trainers or are we talking to clients here? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about trainers first because, you know, we are trainers here. I think success um, is going to be very dependent on how you define it yourself. And for me, a large part of success basically spells freedom. And I think freedom cannot be achieved without some form of um, financial uh, financial strength and also uh, capacity to make income outside of what you do to trade time for money. And right. I feel at least in the first few years of my fitness career, um, I was actually quite quite happy with the idea that I can actually work much less hours than my copywriting job and still get the same amount or even not or, or much more than what I would make in a full time job working way less hours. But if I if I were not to be responsible in controlling the outflow of my money and capital, uh, mm -hmm. I would basically be doing this for a very long time just to trade money, time for money and time for money and keep doing it nonstop. Mm -hmm. if, if anything, I would urge most fitness trainers out there, especially if you don't have placement with a gym that gives you like a basic income, I really urge everyone to take up even you can even get free courses or financial literacy courses to really learn to manage your wealth. Um, right. Because we don't get, I mean, I don't get at least EPF or SOXO or whatnot, and I have to contribute it myself. Uh, I was basically forced to do it by my mom. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a very painful thing to do initially, but I think in hindsight, after doing it for seven, eight years, I think mm -hmm. it was a rewarding move. All right, side question, bro. How long have you been a trainer? Uh, since I when... Ask you this as well. 2011, I did the part-time when I was in uni. Um, okay. I did it for two, two years part-time and I went into a full-time job. I was still doing it part-time. And mm -hmm. then 2014, I decided that, hey, it could be a very viable full-time career. Ah, okay, okay. All right, cool. So I think great tip. Uh, so trainers out there, get yourself uh, financially educated, right? Probably uh, one, of a, one of a very good things. I mean, we are not even taught about these things in school. And let alone, you know, trainers being uh, most of them are, are on their own, right? Like, like they don't have employees to take care of them and all. It's, it's a good idea to 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 learn this skill by yourself. Huh? <clears throat> okay, so let's let's now jump into the to the client section. So we have done the trainer. Uh, what does it mean by by success for clients in the fitness industry or for for exercises? Huh? Let's call it. This is where I personally am a little bit um, divided myself because, mm -hmm. I mean, I have my own philosophy of what uh, success in fitness is. And basically that means that, hey, you are able to let fitness be a part of your life and still still go on with doing everything that you want. Um, in a way, let's say if I'm a working adult, I use fitness to help me to have a better posture at work, less pain mm -hmm. when I'm uh, sitting down for long hours and use it to boost my moods, uh, help me mm -hmm. control my stress levels and things like that, that everyone already knows what exercise does for you. Mm -hmm. But at, at one, that is my goal of uh, what I want to help clients achieve. But clients mostly come to you with the idea that they want to lose 5 kgs, 10 kgs in the next one month to fit into your swimming suit or your wedding dress and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think one thing as a trainer that I try to do at least is to respect what they want as a goal and try to also incorporate my philosophy of uh, helping them understand that hey, this is a long-term journey and there are much more things that you should be uh, cultivating your mental health and how you approach fitness don't just look at it as a one summer kind of thing now, look at it in a very very long term instead how to make it your lifestyle so that is what i mean or define by successful clients mm -hmm. yeah so i think I, I that's that's another question i wanted to ask you because since you're a psych major right uh how do you incorporate what you have learned into your training sessions or into your uh, with your clients? I think... I do think you, do you use any of, of the things that you have learned? Do you use them? My lecturers might not be very happy listening to this. I actually don't know. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, they'll be very disappointed. But I think if anything, I think what I what I've really took away from my psych course is the fact that uh, they, were, they made us read so many research papers. They made us do so many statistical reports and all that. So uh -huh. whenever a certain new, let's say a supplement comes out or a fad diet comes out, um, I mean, I have, I have the tool and the skill set to look at 
uh, research papers and publications and determine or not whether that really works. Uh. And I, I'm sure you've seen it yourself, like years and years. Uh, suddenly, intermittent fasting is a big thing. Suddenly, mm -hmm. uh, keto diet is a big thing. And suddenly, this supplement is all the rage. But mm -hmm. I mean, if you delve deeper into the data uh, and you understand that this uh, is basically just like any other good food or good supplement out there, it doesn't really change lives. It has its benefit, but don't bank all your money on it. Mm -hmm. So that, that's how you use uh, um, what you learn with your clients. How I, right. no, actually, that's how I use my psychology degree, at least to my advantage in, in, in what I do. But for mm -hmm. clients, I am yeah. I'm not how sure you whether with your clients. Or you don't, don't even use it. I don't think it, it has helped a lot. But I, okay. I feel I feel that what my course has taught me, um, psychology course has taught me a lot is at least um, the fact that most people have all these desires, right? I'm sure you know about, do you know about the Maslow's hierarchy of pyramids? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. The five levels. Five levels. You know, I, I don't even know what it is, but <laughs> I think most people in the fundamental level, at least clients who come see me, uh, yeah. yes, they want to achieve fitness results. They want to get um, healthy and whatnot. But I think a lot of people would also appreciate if it's a trainer that really listens to you and understands you and works with your unique specialty. And I just want to sidetrack a little bit into the fact that I've still, since day one of working as a trainer and until now, when uh -huh. a trainer asks, when, when certain trainers ask their clients to uh, do a plank, for example, for 60 seconds. So uh -huh. guess what they're doing for the 60 seconds? The trainer? Yeah. I don't know, probably taking a picture. <laughs> no, uh, most trainers, I feel they are, and, and I know this because I walk past them uh, when they're standing, the clients are doing a plank. They're messaging other people, they're scrolling social media, they are, they're not being present right. in the session, which I think is a mm. very, very important thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Right, so, so, um, what are the majority of your clients? Just, just curious. Are they like more towards uh, body composition, or, or, or like you mentioned, just working adult who wants to fix their posture or, or their moods? What's, what's the bulk of your clients? I would put them mean? in the de demographic of um, maybe between thirty-five to sixty. That's the majority of it, okay. and a lot of them come to me initially with body composition goals to lose weight uh -huh. to build muscle. But I think beyond that, um, after doing that and achieving somewhat of those results after the first six months or nine months, then they start to want to go into maintenance because they, I think they realize uh, sometimes how hard it is to really bring yourself to the gym and repeat what your trainer has asked you to do without a trainer being there. Mm -hmm. So in a way, I'm like a glorified nanny in the gym, I feel sometimes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, how many hours do you spend at the gym per day, give, give or take? Um, I mean, working, I think, not, not your own, own workouts. On average, uh, before the MCO, this MCO mm -hmm. really messed, messed me up a little bit. I think mm -hmm. I was seeing about five six, five, up, five, six clients for five, six clients a day for four, uh, five, six days a week. So it's right, quite a right, happy right. So, it's, so you, so you manage yourself. Mm. Okay. So then, then my next question would be, um, when, when your clients do come in, right? How do you, um, um, entice them to your philosophy, right? Like what are the steps would you give? Let's say someone's watching now uh, on, on, on live. Anyone watching, please uh, uh, leave some comments in the section so I know who's watching or what are your goals or your fitness goals? So maybe uh, uh, Bradley can give you a, a, a piece of his uh, advice, right? Yeah, I should also share this stream on my social media like, if it's possible, if anywhere. Okay, so, you share it on uh, your Facebook, lah, bro. So, you know, your, your fans can uh, come and ask you. Let me check. Okay. Let me find the link later. Okay. So this this guy gained seven kilos in uh, uh, MCO, Kevin. So Kevin, um, definitely you can try Bradley's uh, nasi lemak diet, and you will make sure you don't gain another seven. Uh. <laughs> okay. Uh, Siang Aun says that agree. They texted their friends while their client is doing a plank. Right. Very sneaky, yeah. Uh, because they, you know you do a plank, then they can't see you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you gotta do a plank in front of a mirror now. Okay, so coming back to my question, bro. Um, yeah, let's say someone wants to start their journey. Uh, um, someone watching you mm -hmm. right now. Um, how would you uh, advise them based on your philosophy? What would you say to them? What are the steps? What's the mindset they need to have? I would suggest, um, 
and this is what I've always told clients uh, that there's a lot of trainers in the industry. And to be honest, I may not be the perfect fit for you. And if you do want to sign up or work with a trainer, right, do ask them whether or not they would allow you to have a trial session. And I think in that trial session, uh, your trainer would be, I mean, he will, he or she would try his or his or her very best to help you design your goals and design a program for you. And uh, that's basically my approach from day one. Uh, anyone who wants to train with me, I say, hey, this is my rates, this is what I do. But I highly encourage you to come for one trial session with me first. And then you determine right. whether or not we'd be a good fit as a client and a trainer. Um, I think from there on, that will be easier to, to determine whether or not this is someone you can work with for the next three months, six months, or however long you want that relationship to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's say if, if this person do this, so, okay, that's your prerequisite la, to, to see. I mean, what? Okay. Uh, let me reframe my question. What are the criteria you look for then? Like, how do you know it's a good match? Do you reject them if, if let's say, they do the trial already and then you, you don't feel it's a good fit? Do you reject them or? I I usually would would try to. I wouldn't say I reject them, but then again, there's a lot of clients who are well, these young teenage kids who aren't training because they should be exercising or training, but because their parents are forcing them, and oh. I suppose. That's the demographic that I struggle with the most because uh, it doesn't really come from them. But okay. I don't reject them because the parents uh, just highlight or, or stress out how important it is that they would like their kid to improve. So I, mm -hmm. I don't put them away lah, in that way, in that sense. Okay. So so in your experience, what type of clients are the ones that uh, achieve the most success? I mean, what kind of mindset do they have? Or what kind of steps do they take? That's a very good question. Um, I think the clients that see the most success are the ones who, honestly, they are the slightly older clients, the ones who are at least in the late 40s to early 50s. And I think it's also unfortunate in a way that, hey, uh, the younger generation doesn't appreciate, uh, even myself, I mean, I'm saying this, even myself, right? Don't appreciate mm -hmm. how important it is to really take a note of how important exercise is until you reach a phase where a later phase in life. So those clients are the ones that, that, that see the best results, I feel, because they, they are trying to do it for a bigger purpose than just looking good. They want to be able to be more energetic with their kids, their grandkids, be able to at least get some semblance of youth back into their life. So yeah, mm -hmm. if to answer your question, the ones late 40s and early 50s. Right. The ones you know. with a bigger purpose and a purpose uh, bigger than themselves. Huh? Mm. Nicely mm. put. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, uh, guys, if you have any questions, people who are watching at home right now, any questions for Bradley, please do leave it in the comment section so we can take it. <clears throat> All right. And um, do share this with someone who can benefit from this. Today, um, basically, we are having Bradley over here. So he's a coach with his own philosophy where he believes... Um, instead of teaching people how to, uh, sorry, not only teaching people how to lift, but also to teach people how to live, right? I love that line, man. Yeah, steal your taglines now sometimes. <laughs> okay. Let me share this on, uh, on, on a social media real quick. Uh, hey, go ahead, bro, go ahead. So people who are watching at home, um, let me encourage you to ask Bradley any questions you have about your fitness journey. So if you're just tuning in also, Bradley is the guy who has lost five kilos in a month uh, eating nothing but nasi lemak. So I think um, if you guys would love uh, to know how to do that, to lose five kilos and eat nasi lemak every day or your favorite food, uh, leave it in the comment section so uh, Bradley can help answer them, all right? Okay, bro. So the other day, I think um, we stumbled upon your Instagram and you were talking about... Uh, Hi, Siang An. <laughs> now only we do introductions. Huh? Sorry, sorry. We got too excited and we skipped the introduction already. Uh, okay. Hello, anyway, bro. That day, mm. Okay. So the other day, we uh, uh, stumbled upon your your Instagram and you were talking about diet breaks, right? So yeah. I think that's, uh, that's, a, that's a huge uh, tool that a lot of people don't really use, uh, you know. 
So maybe you can uh, give your insight on that. What's a diet break and yeah, what's the purpose of a diet break? I suppose if, uh, if to address uh, maybe some of the audience here, uh, Christian and Xiang An, um, I mean, if, if, let's say for example, Christian, your goal is to gain, to lose five kg, uh, seven kgs, right? And mm -hmm. say that seven kg might take two months or two and a half months. Uh, and I realized, and this is true training with uh, some clients that it's very hard to maintain a diet for the whole two months, three months. But for a lot of people, I think it's very possible for you to, hey, diet for like a week, diet for like five days. And then maybe in the fifth day or the seventh day or how long you want to be able to push yourself through a calorie restriction. Give yourself that one day or two days of maybe just eating a little bit more normally. Uh, and normal may mean a lot of different things to you. But if we were to be very specific, normal just basically means eating back at your calorie maintenance. So maybe Christian, for your example, let's say if eating 2,500 calories maintains you at your current weight. Um, to diet, you got to eat less than 2,005, maybe you eat 2,000 or 1,008, something around that. Do that for five days, six days, and maybe Sunday, uh, allow yourself that one day of eating back to normal, eating at 2,500 calories again. So uh, that is my approach or uh, to uh, allow clients to take a break from diet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But okay, you, you are jumping straight into the, 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 the caloric uh, numbers and everything. So let's assume like, they, you know, if they don't even know what calories are, where, where would you start with them? Mm. Okay, like, so, you know, this... to even track is, is already a huge step, right? To even uh, track, track your, your, your calories on a daily basis, a huge step already. So where would you, how would you start with them? That's a very good point because I think, uh, as you say, like, it's, it's very easy for me as a trainer and uh, us as trainers to really go into the deep end of the pool, right? And to recommend mm -hmm. calorie counting, macro counting, and yada, yada, mm -hmm. yada to people who are, are really new to this. So for, for people who are really new to this, I think uh, the, the, the idea that you are currently at your current weight, uh, and that's due to who you currently are. What do you do in a day? Uh, how much you eat? And over a prolonged process, that keeps you at your current weight, whatever it is. So in order for you to bring that down, there needs to be a shift in uh, some of the day-to-day -day things, okay? Exercise is one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. Eating lesser is one of them. And eating lesser is a huge part of it. And the thing about eating lesser, it's a very vague statement, right? Like how much lesser should I eat? Should I eat zero, zero carbs? Or should I eat maybe just 10% lesser? Uh, and full of but, bias. <laughs> It is, it is. And, and a lot of people would use uh, eating lesser as an excuse to say, hey, you shouldn't eat this, but you should buy this supplement. But, but I digress. Um, I, I would recommend someone to start this way. Whatever you're eating right now, figure out where that you could be, uh, you could actually take away that food. For example, let's say if you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And in between lunch and dinner, you always go and have that packet of chips or maybe have that coffee, the three-in-one coffee. Maybe that would be a good place for you to, to, to cut and if you do that, am I lagging, bro? No, no, you're good, man. No, okay. Three in one Sorry, coffee, no. I think I agree with you. That's a huge one in Malaysia. No, no, no you're good, I mean, bro. If you, if you do that, then a huge part of what you're consuming in a day just automatically uh, is reduced. Mm -hmm. So to be more specific, uh, counting calories helps you be more objective with that. But if you don't want to do that as a start, it, it might be intimidating for a lot of people who are new then just see where you can take away pieces of, of, of uh, what you're eating in the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I see the best thing commenting. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Ozil. Is this an inside joke or something? <laughs> no, it's a fellow football fan joke. Right, right. Okay, I think uh, Christian did reply to you and he said, I always have to eat too clean to diet. If not, I gain weight. How do I eat normal and lose weight? Huh? Mm, I have to eat too clean to diet. If not, I can't wait. What I, I suppose a question to ask is, um, what is your weight now, Christian? And um, what do you, how do you eat clean? How do you eat too clean? Yeah. Yeah. I think it needs more information. 
Okay, but keep the question coming, guys. Uh, people who are watching at home, please do leave Bradley any questions you would like. Uh, for those that just tune in, probably you could share this with a friend uh, who could need some help getting started with their fitness journey. Okay, so earlier we were talking about um, the the steps, right? So the, and the mindset, like you said, they had, they need to have the long term mindset and and working uh, working out with a bigger purpose especially a purpose that doesn't have to do with themselves. So what are some of the possible uh, mistakes or problems that a beginner might face that you have, you have seen in your, in your span of career, right? And how, how, how do we overcome that? <clears throat> yeah, what kind of mistakes do they usually do? I feel that most people's mistakes are I think I think I, I really like this uh, this recent quote that I, I heard. I think it's by some Roman so, so, Roman philosopher that says, "All of uh, all the problems in humanity is because we cannot think long term or something like that." Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people who first start off in the fitness in the uh, in, in the fitness journey would like to see results in a, a week, two weeks, a month, uh, three months. And honestly, it's not to say that you can't do that. But I think you got to think of that as like um, it's like a really express ticket to your journey, and you cannot use that all the time because uh, it's an expensive ticket if you're on a budget. You get what I mean? Mm. So, so I know a lot of people who, who lose a lot of weight really fast, um, and they might put on the weight back equally fast. And when that happens, they want to lose the weight again fast. And then when they reach a certain weight, because it's too fast for them, their body just cannot adapt or their lifestyle cannot adapt, they go back again. So it's a very toxic yo-yo cycle that um, I myself have gone through. So uh, that's why I, I know how painful it is and how unsustainable it is. Okay. Were you like uh, overweight or something before this? Or under? I think I was, I was at an okay weight, but in 2013 or 14, I was a little bit more involved with uh, modeling. And some of those modeling uh, shows involve uh, topless shoots, uh, topless but still with pants on, uh, uh, runway and all that. So it, it sometimes can be a very short notice and you got to lose a lot of weight really fast. Uh. And mm. although I've done it, although I've, I've been able to lose uh, whatever weight that I needed to in the month, it makes me so, so deprived. It makes me so hungry. And after the show finishes, you just go on like a week long spree of... Uh, Makan, 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 all the food that you've been depriving yourself. Of. And then you feel so guilty. And then you want to go through the diet again. And then you jog and you run and you lift and you don't eat anything. It's it's Vicious a position cycle. that I don't wish anyone to be in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I guess that that is part of the job, right? I mean, models, actors and all. It, in was, a way. it was, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think uh, uh, we'll get back to this because I think Christian just replied to you with a very long uh, description. Can't eat my favorite food, no nasi lemak, no sugary drinks. Like always with steamed food, broccoli and steamed chicken, no curry, basically like in jail or diet without favorite foods. Uh, so he can't find a way to lose weight unless he does this broccoli and steamed chicken. I think Christian, uh, like me, I also enjoy nasi lemak and I enjoy my, my, my soft drinks as well. Um, but I, 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 I do the nasi lemak diet and I make it look easy in a way that I also feel like it might be giving people the wrong perception of how dieting should be. I think dieting would require some form of sacrifice. Um, you cannot, uh, and I still eat nasi lemak, but outside of my nasi lemak meal, my breakfast is very, very, very stagnant. It's the same thing every day. It is two scoops of protein, a piece of fruit, a black coffee, and I go work. And I go work for like the next four or five hours and then my lunch will be on nasi lemak. And usually I just order the usual stuff, like rice with eggs, chicken, uh, vegetables if it's available. Otherwise, uh, I, I, don't, I don't get it. And then for dinner time, that's where I eat a little bit healthier than nasi lemak. It's usually home cooked dish. But when I do eat out, I am very mindful about choosing more high protein dishes. So basically that's it. Some sacrifice um, is involved. Otherwise, I would have to eat like um, two nasi lemak, three nasi lemak a day, right? But no, because I limit it to that one big meal, that means that my breakfast and dinner has to be much lesser in order to accommodate that one good meal. 
So I hope you get um, what I'm trying to say. All right, I think that's a great answer. Um, Christian, just wondering though, how do how do you track your calories, right? Because I think that will give a lot of uh, answers. <laughs> I mean, if, if yeah, it depends on how familiar uh, he is with, with his caloric intake on a daily basis. Because if you go on a broccoli and steamed chicken diet, you know, you, if you, you're, you're shaving off a lot of calories off, of your diet already. So anyway, uh, let's get back to to the mistakes. Uh, okay, so you were you were talking about having a short term mindset, which is basically the opposite of of uh, the long term mindset that 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 you were talking about, like The purpose and all. So what are, are some other problems that you have noticed when it comes to beginners? <clears throat> I, I actually, I don't oh, know. That, I think all, everything can be categorized <laughs> into that short-term mindset. I think, I think the usual mistakes that, that you and I, or even some people, everyone who goes to the gym will see lifting too heavy, uh, spending too much time on the treadmill, and, mm -hmm. and maybe using exercise as a way to outrun your diet. Those are the mistakes that, that everyone makes. I think I myself have, have made in my first few years of being a, uh, a gym goer myself. But it's, I think if anything, any mistakes that you make, just try your best to learn from it and move on from it and use it as a way to improve. Okay, bro. Uh, give me one second because my audio is a little bit... Okay, I think there's a reply from Kevin. Let's see. Uh, he uses an app to track. I did lose weight doing clean diet, but mentally sometimes I feel like, hi, why... I can't have a good meal. Okay. Uh, uh, Kevin, if you are in Penang, go look for Aaron. Aaron and his team <laughs> will help you. They'll sort it out for you. Sort it out, huh? But no, I want Bradley to help Kevin using using this, you know. I think, I think Kevin, you got to ask yourself, um, what do you mean by a good meal? And if a good meal is a huge meal of buffet and you can eat unlimited for the three hours, then I think that is uh, unreasonable of a good meal. But if it's just a plate of nasi lemak or if it's like a bowl of noodles, hey, I think you can easily fit it into your diet maybe once every two days, three days. But know that that good meal should be, um, I would say, earned after maybe being very mindful with what you eat for. Say breakfast and lunch, you eat mostly lean meats and vegetables and uh, you take protein shake and you eat fruits. And dinner time, you have so much more room to consume. You can actually have a meal that you enjoy. And I like saying this, and maybe I'm biased to say this. I feel like foods that you like actually taste much better after a period of deprivation. Mm -hmm. It's like you tahan, tahan, tahan. At the end of the day, you will get a huge, nice shower. It's the same thing. Right? It's like you tahan. Then at night, after you finish work, getting everything done, right. have your nasi craving intensifies, huh? Damn shock. Yeah? Right. <laughs> Damn shock. Okay, so I hope that helped, Christian. Um, I think before we move on, there's one question that we got from Instagram. So maybe we can take that first uh, before we move on. So this person is asking you, actually, I'm doing uh, my bachelor's in health and fitness. Should I take another set to qualify to be a trainer? Yeah, so it was, it was Karen, man. It, it was Karen. But it was Aaron, Aaron, the CSCS, uh, CSCS <laughs> owner. No, he's asking you, bro. I I want to say it's very it's very different for me because I was doing this part time in the gym and I really learned from the basic of uh, shadowing a trainer who's more experienced, understanding what I should do and how I should communicate with clients and all that. It's a very long process, and I think that taking a cert uh, may help you to speed up that process. But a cert is just a cert unless you have on the ground practical experience. And even with a cert, sometimes it may be very daunting and very difficult if you are training your first client like, hey, this guy is paying me money for me to teach him how to work out. Oh man, I'm so nervous. What to do? I think you need to go through that kind of uh, sucky feeling like, for the first week or first month. And mm -hmm. after that, I think if you have a cert, um, 
the other side is much better, but you still have to suffer through the first few clients. Uh, the sense of self-doubt, the sense of uh, questioning yourself, hey, am I fit to be a trainer? Sorry if I digress a little bit too far, but that's how I felt. No, I think I think it's spot on, bro. I think uh, most people uh, always have this question before they want to come into the industry. And the answers are also so complicated. Different people, different answers. Just, just like what you've mentioned earlier. Right, so... Uh, you know, this whole fitness industry, the whole fitness journey, everybody is getting so many different answers, even more so nowadays. Like, it's so complicated, right? How would you simplify it for people out there? Uh, that, that, is, that is something that I strive to do, but it's very hard to do because at one end, fitness should be very simple so everyone can experience it. But on the other end, everyone is so different that fitness may mean very different things for them. Uh, exercises uh, exercises that are effective for some may not be something that is effective for some other person. But if I were to simplify, it's just you got to really start somewhere. And then after that, uh, same thing as what I mentioned earlier, you got to learn from your mistakes. If you feel that, hey, running, you've been running for the first month or two, you haven't, you haven't seen results, maybe change things up. Maybe it is weight training that's going to help you out. In weight training, you, you you feel like, hey, why is my back hurting from this? Then you feel like, hey, maybe I'm lifting the weight the wrong way. And then you try to modify things. And you come to a point where, I mean, you'll be a much better version than yourself, of yourself, compared to if you didn't start. Now. So just start, just start something as simple as if it's just a 10 minute walk a day. And I know it's very easy for me to say that. It's very easy for us as trainers to, to say that because we live and breathe in the fitness industry. But I don't know how much more easy I can simplify that otherwise. Yeah. Sometimes when you're in too deep, right, it, it gets hard to see it from a different perspective. You know what I mean? <clears throat> good point. That's a very good point. Yeah. So, okay. We have about 15 minutes left on the clock, guys. Uh, if you have any more questions, do leave it down for Bradley. Uh, it could be anything you want. So, yeah, I hope uh, this viewer from Instagram got his answer. Basically, you know, do both. <clears throat> get experience, get the cert. All right. Um, so maybe let's go back to, to you. So I'm really intrigued by, by your philosophy when it comes to training people. Um, so what would you say is your ultimate goal in life, Bradley? It's a huge question, but I would love to know. Uh, and, and I think my ultimate goal in life is a little bit more selfish than, than what I set out to do in the fitness industry. Um, it is very much uh, freedom, freedom to be able to, and, and I struggle to say this as well because it's still so blurry in my own mind. It is freedom to be able to, to, to kind of do the things that I would like to do. You know, your cliche stuff like have more time, spend more time with family, travel. And I realized that fitness is a vehicle to help me achieve that. But if I'm not smart with my finances in learning how to grow them, how to invest and how to manage my uh, cost of living, I, I won't be able to achieve that. Uh, as lucrative as the fitness industry, as, well, at least during the boom before this whole COVID destroyed us, uh, is mm -hmm. I think you've got to learn how to manage that. Now. But beyond that, my goal, my goal is to be able to, um, and, and, and I think I read one of your posts as well, uh, one of the videos that says, Malaysia, we are the fattest country in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I would like to contribute to that conversation of helping to solve that problem by introducing a more simple, moderate approach to embracing fitness. And hence the Nasi Lemak diet because it's a very Malaysian thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And I wanted, to, I wanted that message to spread, to spread, to, to help people, even if it's just a small group of people, to, to kind of build a community going forward. Well, I think it reached a lot of people, bro. If, if people in the mall, I know, recognize you, I think you should definitely do more of those, man. Uh, you know, oh, like thanks. I said, you should do a Roti Chanai version and then you do a Chakwetia version, you know. 100% going to get uh, the message across. Our Chakwetia is not as good as what you guys have in Penang, man. So maybe it's hard. <laughs> it's okay. You can do a Penang trip then. See? Double. Uh, you can block uh, tourism, you can block food, you can block uh, fitness. <laughs> so your entrepreneurial mind, bro. <laughs> All right, uh, Kevin Christian, thanks for the info. Bradley will try to follow your advice. Great. Christian, hope you uh, 
get some good results. Later, go and thank Bradley. Uh, any more questions? Do keep them coming in uh, for Bradley. Siang An says, Bradley, may I know your IG? Okay, I think I'll get my team to uh, put Bradley's IG in the comment section. Oh, Bradley, I, I, don't have, I don't have IG on my phone right now. I deleted it because it was sucking up too much of my time. So I may not reply oh. uh, wow. promptly on it. That's amazing, bro. A lot more people should strive to be like you. <gasps> okay. Um, so if there are no more questions, maybe we could... Uh, this is the first time we are doing it in the morning, though. So well, maybe thanks, the, how many people are watching? Let's see. It's about 12 people right now. So all those 12 are watching right now. Uh, any questions for... Uh, there you go. That's uh, Bradley's IG. So how, how can they contact you if they want to maybe? Or your website or something? Where are your Just blogs on, by the way? Yeah? My blogs, I haven't been retargeting for a while. But you can check it out at uh, themalaysianbody.com. Uh, uh, okay. And you can text me on Instagram. Like, I will log in through my computer when I'm on mostly every other night. Like. Okay. So that's that's uh, Bradley's uh, Instagram. Uh, so go add him up. Drop him a DM. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So um, if there are no more questions, maybe what's the final message that you want to leave to people who are watching at home? Uh, I... I want to say, I want to say, I haven't had, I've never had such a big, important platform like this. So he put me on the spot, bro. Put you on the spot. Uh, if you're on Penang, go check out Aaron, KD Trainer. And <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> it's about you, Brad. I, Where I, are you based, I, by the way? Uh, what's the area that, you know, you do your training? Mostly in uh, Selangor, in Satya Alam, or in Monkara. So these Satya are two main Alam places. Satya Alam or oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Quite far apart, huh? Yeah, yeah. Two very far okay. apart places. And message, you live in message. You? I live in Sate Alam, so it's easier for me to train clients in Sate Alam. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would drop by one of these days. <laughs> when the borders right. open. Now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, any last words for uh, the people watching? Uh... I would challenge everyone to, 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 to figure out what is it that, um, you know, everyone says there's this food that I cannot live without, right? Uh, for me, back then, it was nasi lemak. Lah, and it might be different now because imagine eating nasi lemak for 100, 150 days. I think that's how much I did. <laughs> yeah. But figure out what is it that you like to eat. And then if you have a fitness goal, right, try to achieve that goal while still somewhat being able to consume that food. So I think that would really put you in a very different zone or mindset to achieve your fitness goals because you're not going to feel like you're depriving yourself and you're still going to, uh, you're still going to make progress and make, make, the, make progress towards your fitness goal. And ultimately, this will make it more fulfilling and this will make it feel more like a sustainable journey. Yeah. The parting words... All right. Amazing. And also, also, right, to, to go find Aaron and KD Trainer in Penang if you guys are finding a fitness hey, bro. gym there. <laughs> I'm going to shy, you know? <laughs> no, no, I think a uh, great talk. Uh, very deep, right? Very uh, philosophical as per oh, Bradley. Thank you. I know you. Amazing stuff. So hopefully, uh, we're going to catch up one of these days. Uh, I've been doing these lives with, with all the other guys also. But sadly, haven't, we haven't met in real life. So maybe one day we could do that. Soon, soon. Yeah, bro. All right. So thank you, guys. If there's no questions, I guess that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. Um, do give us a like. Spam the love button. Give some love for Bradley for doing this. Thank you so much, Bradley, for coming. Thanks, thanks for having and, me. Uh, yeah, if you guys uh, want a bookmark on this, do share this on your own page so you can watch it again and... and, and Again, really listen to uh, what Bradley advised. I think Bradley's advice, you need to really uh, let it digest. So, you know, listen to it a couple of times because I think it's, it's kind of deep if, if you're just starting out your journey. But, you know, it will make more sense as you go along. Right? Sorry, I have that problem. I always go to <laughs> No, it's great because I completely understand what you're saying. 
but okay and tell say thank you for sharing all right so if there's no more questions um thank you so much for watching you guys have a great weekend thank you so much brett thank you thank you for having me man ciao